a hole. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Okay, Paul, I'm going to look at your putting stroke and compare it to Tiger Woods. On the left was your putting stroke at the beginning of the session before we made any adjustments. First, let's look at your setup. You have a very similar setup to Tiger. Your stance and width of your stance is about the same. Your elbows are slightly tucked into your sides. They're not locked arms straight, which is good. Uh, your eyes are over the ball. Setup looks really good. You'll notice that his... When he starts out, his arms are in, in shaft or kind of form a letter Y, just as yours do. So that's good. And then as he comes back to the end of the stroke, he still has that letter Y. So he swung his elbows and the club as a unit. The distance his elbows are now are basically the same as they were when he started. So he didn't take it back by bending his wrist. He took it back with his arms and a little bit of a, of a rocking of the shoulders. His follow through stopped right there. Let's look at your back swing. You, uh, in a very similar way, keep your arms together. You're, you swung both forearms about the same distance. You didn't take it back with, with wristiness. Uh, you swung the elbows and the forearms uh, as a unit, as a connected unit. That's very good. And your putter went to here. Then on the follow-through, Tiger comes through. He hits the ball, and he still has that letter Y. And the distance between his elbows is about the same. As you come through, you, you come through a little differently than Tiger does. You tend to cup that left wrist quite a bit. And so you have quite a bit of an angle right there in your left arm and so you don't really have that V-shape anymore. And you can see how your this left elbow has separated and swung behind you. And this distance here is much greater now than in when it was started. So you've really cupped the back of this left wrist. And uh, Tiger kind of kept that, whatever angle he started with, he maintained. He didn't exaggerate or, or, uh, that wrist angle. So you have a cupping action going on, and uh, that's one of the things that we've worked on. The other thing that Tiger does, and, and you do a little bit, um, and I want to focus on that, is that when Tiger makes contact with the ball, his eyes are down, and they stay down as the ball rolls away. Tiger keeps his eyes to the ground, they're still down. And then he'll come to a complete stop. Well, the putter is finished now. And it's only after he's hold, held that finish for a moment or two will he start to turn away. And so he'll putt, he'll hold the finish, and then he'll look. And now you see him start to turn his head and look. And while he turns, he keeps his posture, his spine angle, and he keeps his putter still basically right there where he finished the stroke. He doesn't recoil the, the putter back. As you come through, so now let's look at your stroke as you make contact. You have your eyes down. You do turn the head a little bit immediately um, and to follow that ball. Now you don't do it really excessively, um, but quite a bit. Now the other thing that's we notice here is that your follow through is really long. You can see uh, how short Tiger's uh, putting stroke is, and your backswing was about here. Your follow through was here, so that's a fairly long stroke. And uh, if we could create enough power to get that same distance 
but have a little bit more compact stroke. So learn to maybe, maybe we would have a backswing to here and a follow through to here to cover the same distance. Uh, that would be better. So to have a stroke that, st that swings back to here and finishes here to cover the same distance, let's say hypothetically that was 30, a 30 foot putt that you were trying to hit and you were using a stroke that was really long, I would like for you to have a stroke that could cover 30 feet from here to here. And so that would be a little bit better. So it have a little bit shorter stroke. That was really good for a first time to try a new way of moving the putter. That feel different? Okay. Right now we're just learning the stroke, once that's learned and owned by you. Okay, good, good. So putt, hold, and don't look. Hold that, and whatever that felt like, you want to copy it. Whatever that felt like, you copy. Hold. Okay, hold and remember. And after you hit this one, don't look. I'm going to ask you a question. But try to make it feel like the others. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a question. Of the three, which one was the shortest? The second one. That's correct. The first and third were about the same. Now let's compare the, your new stroke. On the right was after we worked on keeping the wrist from cupping, the back of the left hand from cupping, and swing the letter Y as a unit. Let's look again at the stroke on the left before we made that change, so you can kind of see the difference and how your left wrist really buckles right there. And so here's your left wrist, left arm there, and then your new stroke, comes through very nice, very good. So you can see how your, your left hand swung towards the target instead of stopping on this one, you, your left hand just kind of stopped right here, but you let that left hand swing out toward the target. Much better.